Sarah Shahi, you play White House Deputy Chief of Staff Zara Bankston in the romantic comedy Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is adapted from the novel by Casey McQuiston. Um, had you read the novel before the opportunity for this movie came around? No, I hadn't. Um, I hadn't read it. And, you know, actually, I, had been, I hadn't even heard of it until after I got this offer. Um, but once I did get the film... I did buy the book and it was quite a juicy read and it was an easy read. And yeah, Casey just has such a way with words and um, it was fun. It was a lot of entertainment. And uh, what did you think about uh, Zara as a character when you read the book? Oh, she, I mean, she was one of my favorites, you know? Um, everything from just her energy to those great sarcastic one-liners that she had. I mean, I always sort of pictured her as like a um, a T-Rex in heels was what I always pictured. And Matthew just did a brilliant job of adapting it. Um, yeah, it was just, there was a, you know, when I read the book and then the screenplay, the thing that resonated the most to me was how relatable the story was. So, you know, Zara, it never mattered to me if she had one scene or if she had 10, because I found myself in the two guys. I found their behavior um, and the story. It, it just felt like a classic rom-com, like a classic rom-com from the 90s, you know, something that we just don't see very much anymore. And then when I spoke with Matthew, about some of his influences. I'm a I'm a huge lover of all the old Howard Hawks movies and Catherine Hepburn movies and sort of the screwball comedies of like the 30s and 40s. And when he had some of those as as his references, I was like, oh well this is a guy I can fuck with. You know, like this is somebody we're gonna be on the same page with this. And yeah, again, it was just I had to be a part of this no matter how big or small Zara was because I was so pulled by the story. And one thing that's refreshing uh, in this modern era is having those classic uh, references, but getting yeah. to tell a queer love story yeah. uh, in that context, which obviously we, you know, was wouldn't have been done in in the the forties or thirties or forties, uh, yeah. or even in the nineties in a lot of cases. Hundred uh, so percent. Yeah. What did you think about that opportunity? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I mean, I am you know no stranger to the queer fan base. Um, going back to the L word. You know, it's like that was my first job I had ever gotten. And to be able, I didn't understand the scope or the magnitude of the position I was in either until after uh, the show came out. And I would have people write to me about how my character helped them come out or the, you know, my character helped like bridge a gap between them and their families who didn't understand or it just really provided like a, a a bridge, a connecting point for a lot of people, the character they saw on TV and, and then the person in real life. And the fan base is so loyal. They're so wonderful. You know, it's like I've I've even been very outwardly spoken about how I would love to go back from the L word. So it's it's an honor. It's a privilege. Like I love being a part of the movie just for what it is as a standalone film and its beauty, but then the message behind it and the audiences that it can reach. It's just like, it's like icing on the cake for me, you know? Um, and uh, one of the uh, highlights of the film um, is the scene where uh, uh, Zara finds out uh, about, uh, uh, you know, Alex and, and Henry. Oh. Yeah. Um, what was it like shooting that scene? What what went into that? Because that's such a, a highlight for, for Zara. Yeah, no, that was a great scene. Um, I was always jet lagged on this film. We shot it in London and I'm a single mom of three kids. And so I was always coming like, you know, just the night before I had to shoot. And then the minute I wrapped, I was out of there. Um, so the day that I came for that, I think I had just arrived when we shot that scene. And I was so jet lagged. I wasn't even sure what language I was speaking for the first half of the day. Um, but there was a lot of choreography because, um, you know, the room was kind of big in its size. And it was just a really wonderful scene because they let me play and run around the room. And the camera was completely inspired by the moves that my character was making. And, you know, I was a little nervous at first. I didn't want the scene to come across too big or for it not to be grounded. So there was also sort of that extra 
challenge of realizing whenever we went into the closer setups to have the reactions be, you know, a bit smaller. And then in the wider shots, I went bigger. Um, but it was really great. And like, I've never had an opportunity to do comedy before. You know, I feel like people always hire me to cry. <laughs> so the fact that Matthew, you know, gave me this and everyone ended up responding as positively as they did to Zara, it was a real, um, it was a real acknowledgement for me. It was a real validation. I never expected uh, A, the movie to do this big, especially since it came out during the strike. So it really felt like a missed opportunity to be able to talk about something that I was so passionate about. And that was a huge bummer um, for all of us. But then on top of that, you know, to have Zara be heralded as well, like it was just, it was so surprising. I had no idea that this would happen, but yeah, she's got some pretty um, iconic moments and, you know, the book definitely expands on her and I hope we get to see more of her down the line on something. But um, yeah, it was, uh, it, it's been a fun ride. Uh, and comic timing is is so much a part of like screwball comedy. Uh, was yes. you know, How many takes really like went into it? Was, you know, a lot of takes, a lot of coverage, a lot of, you know, playing around with it? Um, I can't remember because I can barely remember the names of my children, let alone um, what I did last year with this. But um, no, just kidding. I know all the names of my children. Um, but it was because, again, I had I was a huge fan of all of those movies. Like I grew up with a single mom and the only television that we had was this black and white tube that played only Sophia Loren movies and Katherine Hepburn movies. And so it was just black and white film. And so if he said, Rosalind Russell, give me some of Rosalind Russell from His Girl Friday, do Katherine Hepburn and Bringing Up Baby, do that. It's like, I knew exactly what he was talking about, but it, it really took, you know what it was for me? It was like blind trust, you know, or blind faith and knowing that my director whom I had never worked with before, you know, I, I, I didn't have any visuals to go. It's not like we were watching, um, you know, after each take we were, we were replaying it. And so it was just a real exercise in trust that he knew what he was doing. And I adored him so much that I went there with him. So I'm not sure how long it took or how many takes we did. I pretty confidently remember it taking, you know, a, a good half of the day, a good four hours or so to get it. Um, and also playing around with the different degrees of how big I can go. Uh, you know, how big when, when the, cause she melts down, she completely melts down in that scene. It's like watching a computer melt down. And what does that look like? You know, her brain is malfunctioning, but at the same time, oh, this is something, it was really important to me. And I told Matthew this, that she doesn't come across anti their love affair. You know, I still wanted Zara very much to be a, a, a proponent of this. Like she has no problem with the fact that they're together. It's just the fact that the timing is really fucking bad right now, fellas. You know what I mean? It's like, you couldn't keep it in just until the election season was over. Like I just, I was, I was very cautious with him. And I, that was the one thing I was a little nervous about as I was like, I don't want anyone to come out of this thinking I'm anti any of this because I'm so not, and Zara's not either. Um, but it's that real sort of familiar brother sister relationship that she has with Alex that even makes her feel so comfortable being so outwardly critical because of the timing of it and what this could mean for his mother in terms of the election, you know? Um, so that was something that was a line too. I was very careful about. And again, it just meant the world to me that it didn't come across like that. And it didn't. So we succeeded in that sense. Yeah, I, yeah I, that was one of the things that I really appreciated about, you know, Zara as a character and also the yeah. president uh, as a character is that the the issue is never that these are two men who are together. It's that no. yeah. you know, it's the political ramifications of who they are specifically and, you know, the timing of it that, that makes That's it right. so complicated. Yeah. And even the story altogether, like I just didn't, you know, even though it is a gay rom-com, I never saw it as that. I just saw it as the two lead characters are gay, but it just was so relatable on so many levels. You know, like I said, I found my own behaviors reflected in a lot of what the two leads were doing. 
that I just, again, like I felt like I was just watching a classic, like rom-com from the nineties, like a Julia Roberts, you know, thing from the nineties. It just felt no different to me. Um, but again, it is a gay rom-com and what it has ended up doing and how commercially huge it's gotten was, it's just so, so great for the community as well. Uh, and you mentioned uh, Matthew Lopez, the director yeah. of his first feature film as a director. He's a Tony winning playwright. Uh, what He's was so he annoying. like as a director? He is so talented, it's annoying. <laughs> what I'm like, don't put just he's annoying. He is so talented, it's annoying. And his ideas are always good. And he's one of the best writers I've ever worked with. And I just think he's absolutely genius. And I would do anything that he did because he truly is a maestro behind the scenes. And I, I really, really love him and have a lot of adoration with, for him. Um, you know, Matthew... There are those directors that are very collaborative and don't know what they want. And then there are directors that know exactly what they want and they're not very collaborative. And then you have Matthew who knows exactly what he wants and he's collaborative and willing to try things and play things and would shoot out different lines to me from time to time. Now try, th now try this line, now try this line. And it was just so refreshing to work with somebody who is as talented as he is, but also invites you to sit at the table as well. Um, but like I said, I just can't speak highly enough of him. I adore that man. Uh, and you know, a lot of your your primary scene partner throughout the film is uh, Taylor Zakar Perez uh, as yeah. Alex. Um, and as you mentioned, there's sort of like a sibling rapport between the two of them. Uh, how did the two of you work together as actors to kind of develop that relationship? You know, it was instant. I mean, I could sit here and lie to you and say, oh, well, we had, you know, we got together and did three, four hour rehearsals and had, you know, um, chemistry sessions. But no, that's all bullshit because it was, it was just like that. It was very real from the start. We instantly kind of found each other as siblings in a way, you know, it's like we both kind of were dark and looked similar. And I just feel like we just gravitated to the chemistry our characters have in real life. And it's, you know, it's fun to hit him with a pillow, you know, and call him an idiot. You know, it's fun to do stuff like that because when do I get to do stuff like that? Never. So to be able to have this little brother that I can take out anger and frustration on and point a finger at from time to time and roll my eyes at, you know, it was just really fun. Um, and then also there's the other side of that too, which is like, he is, you know, Alex is very smart and he is the president's son and he has good ideas. So not to, not to disregard him too easily too, when he comes to me for things and to actually be in a position of being a teacher and helping to guide, um, you know, this young person in the world of politics, because he does want to make a difference. So there was just so much for me to chew on from the beginning with, with Zara. I, you know, uh, and speaking of a lot to chew on, there is, uh, you know, so much world that this film and the book uh, create. Uh, yes. Is this a character that you would ever want to revisit if the opportunity came? A hundred percent, I would. You know, like I said, I was really, I found her to be, you know, I mean, separate from the fellas, I I would really, really gravitated to her and found her to be one of the guest, best characters in the book and in the film. She was so smart. She was so sarcastic. She was, I just really found her energy refreshing in a sense that she was the no bullshit, um, had no filter. And I think those kinds of characters, they're always fun to play. Uh, well, uh, I want to congratulate you for your work in the film. Um, and uh Thank you so much for, for talking to me about it. It must be great to actually be getting to talk about it now. I know, a year later, my gosh. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for your time as well. I can't thank you enough for noticing the film. Well, my pleasure. 